What up, y'all? So check this out. Let's run our scan. Charts and tools. Come over here to predefined scans. And what do you know? It's like Christmas in the stock market. Bullish MACD crossover at the New York Stock Exchange. 428 companies. The NASDAQ, 254 different charts that are set up with a bullish MACD crossover. So all you have to do is click on one of the numbers and you have a list in alphabetical order, right? This is how you can find uh, your setups that you can trade. So you can go in alphabetical order or what I like to do is filter this by the volume, right? Filter it by the volume and then go chart Bank of America. Boom. Now, the reason why this popped up on the list, the bullish MACD crossover, is the MACD right here. You see the red line crossing, or the black line crossing above the red line, just like it did there. Boom, just like it did there. Boom. And then look at the stock price. What happens to the, pocket, the price of the stock? when it crosses over the stock goes bullish All right so we're starting to see stock go bullish alright so not only do we have the MACD crossing over we have the histogram ticking upwards the RSI was low low is defined by less than 30 here's the line of 30 right here All right so what the RSI is doing is trying to move it's trying to measure the velocity of the price changing right it's trying to measure if the the price has moved too far too fast in one direction or the other so when the macd or sorry when the rsi goes hot which is 70 then look what happens to the price of stock afterwards all right the rsi goes hot stock price comes coming uh, comes falling Right, so whenever you have a RSI that's above 70, that's letting you know, hey, you should be locking in some profits right now, man. This thing is hot, right? And if you didn't, then look what happened. You would have seen that fall. Very, very, very nasty fall. Right, so no, the the RSI couldn't have predicted that the um, banks were gonna collapse, right? This isn't telling you, A, the banks are going to collapse. This is telling you the price of this stock went up very violently. Look at these look at these, these bars over here, right? That's a big bar. That right there is a big bar, right? And then the price continued to run and run and run. And then look at the gaps too. But the price continued to run. So imagine you just had, you know, a lot of foresight and you bought on this day and then you log in on this day and you see the RSI is hot right this should tell you yo you need to be locking in some profits because what's coming next is most likely a pullback and guess what came next the pullback right so then the RSI goes cold below 30 right so while the price is down here the RSI is low below 30 so imagine you buy here, sell here. Buy here again, and this over here, why the RSI is low, right? And you would be selling it the next time the RSI touches 70, right? That's one uh, method you can use to determine when you're gonna sell, right? Just extreme RSI. So then, here we go again, RSI is low. If it was low here, could have been buying here. Right, so I would say, um, if you were to just blindly follow this on like the largest stocks, then you know you'll hit. But you need to have a system in place that's more precise than just simply waiting for the RSI to go cold, because the RSI can go cold and the price can keep coming down. So here, for example. All right, so the RSI went cold on this day. 
So let's see where the price was. Right here. So the so the RSI start going cold at thirty two dollars. So if you were to just buy at thirty two dollars, then it would have fell all the way down here to what's this twenty six something. So it just kept falling on you. So you need a system that's more clearly defined than simply the RSI is low, right? But I just wanted to um, show you that eventually, if you were to trade extreme to extreme, you could make some money. But if you were to tighten up your system, you would make more. You would make money more consistently. All right. So I'm gonna take uh, these moving averages off of the chart. Now there's something I want you to pay attention to. And I've kind of been pointing this out on social media a little bit more, but I'm going to emphasize it. These gaps will fill. Do you see how the price was here, 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 then it jumped up here? The price is going to come back down into this little box and fill this, this gap. I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen, right? The price will come back here, down here again. I, it could happen in three months. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen in the next few days, but it's going to happen eventually. All right, so we have a bullish, we have a bullish MACD crossover. That's why we found this stock on this uh, search stockcharts.com, which is free by the way. So if even if you don't have a membership, like cool, bro, you can still do this. All right. So, you see Bank of America is at 28.67. You need to look for targets in which uh, you will take profits or you will sell or where the price is likely to go, where you think the price is likely to go, right? So, previous high is always um, uh, a target. So, write this down if you're taking notes. Pre previous high is always a target. Uh, old levels of support, old levels of resistance are always targets as well. So what do I mean by this? The previous high, so or where, oh, also wherever the stock price fell from. So this big sell-off started right here, right? It started here and it started selling off. So boom, you can just go ahead and turn this. This eventually will be a price target. All right, old support levels you see the price is falling 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 price is falling 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 right eventually it stops here stops falling at this level all right this old support level can now be used as a price target there's different ways to find your price targets and everybody analyzes and views trading with technical analysis different that's why everyone doesn't take the same trades because everyone has their own little spin on it, right? So this old support level, price target. Cool. This old support level right here, price target, All right? And then also I'll take this one. Right, price pops, then it starts falling, 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 falling. Cool. Boom. If I were to trade Bank of America, this is where I would, these are my price targets. Now, <clears throat> now that you have your price target, oh, just support level here too, another price target. All right. And then resistance up here. Boom. All right, so now that you have these uh, price targets set up, which you could do, imagine you're not going to trade options, you're going to trade common shares. What you could do is then go determine what the percentage change is because you need to know if and when it hits this price target, what type of return are you looking at, right? So that first price target is only 2% away. This is 6% away. This is 10% away, 15% away, 21% away, 30% away. All right, so 
trading Bank of America from where it's at to uh, this previous high right here will give you about a 30% return. Now, 30% 30% return uh, trading common shares is decent, right? If you were to trade stock options, you can get that tomorrow pretty easily. But um, I just want you to know, like, this is how you can analyze what you're likely to get because you'll be able to determine if you're going to take a trade or if you're interested in taking a trade based on the potential risk and the potential rewards all right so now that you have that you also need to determine your stop loss right Let me clear this out you need to determine your stop loss so if you were to get into this trade when will you get out of this trade if it turns against you so there's two almost obvious answers here for me right this could be one right or the gap closing could be another all right the close of the gap which means <clears throat> if the stock price comes down to this level and blows through it then it's likely to go down to the next level right which means it'll keep coming down to this if it blows through this line it'll likely go down to this level of support if it blows through that it'll just keep going right so you need to determine when are you going to get out right the closer you are to the to the stop loss the safer it is but you can get stopped out of a lot of trades that will eventually work in your favor or could eventually work in your favor if you don't give yourself enough leeway for uh the trade to kind of breathe you know you set your stop loss too tight it blows through your stop loss it comes back here then it runs to your price target and you got stopped out of the trade so um here's probably the safest one boom this gap will close y'all just remember you can use one of those. Those are the obvious ones that I see. You could use one of those. Or you could just, if, if you were, uh, this is trading, you guys. If you're an investor, then you can gauge maybe just the RSI is, oh, okay, this is pretty cold. I'm going to buy it. And then you have no stop loss on your, uh, on your investment. All right. So we just looked at that really quick because it popped up. Um, for on the scan with the highest volume so bullish magd crossovers all right let's just go through some aap <clears throat> all right i want you guys to practice doing this every day clear all take all the moving averages out you should just look at the price and then just from strictly the price you should be able to set target and stop losses, right? Where would your target be here? Boom, that's a target for me. My next target is going to be here. My next target is going to be here. All right, and then my next target is going to be gap closing, 175. All right, so if you wanted to... If you wanted to make this trade, give me one second. <clears throat> all right, if you wanted to make this trade like a long-term swing trade that you don't have to check all the time, maybe you guys see me post about uh, my Bitcoin that I bought it back in September and then I just checked it uh, last month I was up in the last one month I was up like 400k if you like to take those type of trades where you could just good entry and wait this would be a, a, a idea set up here right because this gap down you can trade the gap closing all right so again go check the percent change to make sure it's going to be worth your money So you'll have about a 50% return when this gap 
feels, right? So imagine you take $10,000, you uh, set it in motion, you buy some AAP, and you wait four or five months. Your 10000 becomes 5000 or you make 5000 off your 10000 and your position is now worth fifteen. And you sell out of some as you go. All right, so... Also, you would need your stop, right? My stop, if I were to get in here, put it down here, 109. This breaks 109, I'm out of the trade, right? Which means I would lose 7%, right? I'd take a 7% L. So, cool, sounds like a good, uh, so if you're trading with, a hundred bucks, you're risking seven dollars. You're trading with a thousand bucks, you're risking seventy dollars. You're trading with ten thousand dollars, you're gonna risk seven hundred dollars in order to get five thousand dollars, right? So as you hit your price target, you could sell off some. Maybe this price target hits and you sell off a third of your position or a fourth of your position or a fifth of your position. And then as this price target hits, you sell off another third, another fourth, another fifth this price target hits you sell off the rest or whatever right or you sell off another third and you leave the rest to uh to run or <clears throat> so when i set these price targets this is when i'm looking looking to to start scaling out of the trade or when the rsi goes high so the rsi if the price goes from 117 to 135 in three days even though 135 isn't one of my price targets, the RSI will likely be at 70, so I'd be selling out there. All right. So cool. Uh, I like this trade actually. AAP. All right, advanced auto parts. I would like that. I would take that. This is something I would actually take myself. Um, where's that list at? I think it's over here. All right, cool. Uh, Ford chart. All right, I would set my price targets here. I would set my stop there. This chart is is not really worth it for Ford to move from twelve dollars to thirteen dollars. I wouldn't make too much money, right? Something like this. Maybe you could look into trading options, but trading common shares. The spread on the price isn't there for me, so that's a no go. AMC. Let me just save all these parameters being zero. All right, uh, AMC. All right, so here could be a stop, but if you wanted to make sure that you're not taking that much of a risk, move your stop right here at the bottom of this bar, right? And then you can go here you see and the reason i picked here is you see the price comes up here then it stops and it ultimately falls right you could even use boom here like i said the way that everybody interprets these charts are different that's why everyone has different entries that's when everyone has different exits that's why everyone finds different plays so i'm just showing you my method on how i do it and then you can learn from that and build on that all right, and then we'll go about there. Price at five bucks. Cool. All right, this is a trade worth taking as well, in my opinion. Let's 
Creed. You guys see why I always say I don't think something's worth, like a trade is worth taking, like using common shares, because if the price is at six uh, thirty-four, although the MACD is crossed over, what are we gonna do? Trade it right back to seven dollars and fifty cents. That's not good enough for a swing trade for me, right? So things like that. Let's just move on to the next one. So you can get good at this. You can get, you know, so used to looking at charts that you can just click this. Nope. Let's go look at MPW. Cool. I need to be adding here. This is a um, uh, investment that I have and that I've been making. Uh, I'll be adding to this. Right. I'm not going to set any price targets because it's an investment, but <laughs> if you were to set price targets, right? I, and the reason why I'm making the investment is because I want to hold it long term for the dividends, right? If I set a price target and sell it, when it gets to the price target, I'm not going to get the dividends if I'm not holding through uh, the correct dates. So um, I'd probably take this $10, take this $11.50. Probably here, here, and here. Boom. They're, those would be my price targets if I were to trade it. All right. Because I'm an investor in this company, then I would just be loading up while it's being crushed. Right. And then another thing, too, in my investments, you can also pull back and look at a weekly chart. Boom. And see, it's being hit on the weekly as well. Right. So I kind of like that. Not only is it weak. And not only was it being blasted on the day chart, it's being blasted on the week chart. So I want to make sure that I'm catching the lowest of the lowest. And if I think it's going any lower, then I'll just wait it out and let it keep falling. Right? I want to buy at the lowest price possible. Cool. All right, you guys should probably have a good understanding of what I'm about to do or where I'm about to do it, right? So we can go here, the gap closing, here, even this resistance level here, boom. All right, those would be targets. Stop loss. Look, you see this little gap up? You can go the fill of the gap. You can go the bottom of here. Your risk is very important. It's never just about the return. It's about the risk you took to get the return. All right, always keep that in mind. It's about the risk you took to get the return, not just the return itself. All right, if so if somebody says, oh, I, uh, I turned $10,000 into $4 million, right? Everyone goes, what? I got 10000 I got 10000 But do you have 10000 to lose? Because what did you risk? The whole 10000 right? Because it was a risky investment, <clears throat> right? So whenever you see people, especially when they're talking about options, right, you're, you're maybe doing the dividend thing or maybe you're doing swing trading and you just think that it's not moving fast enough or other people are making more money faster, know that they're risking more money as well. You have. I'm not saying it's a better thing. I'm not saying it's the worst thing. But what I am saying is you have to acknowledge the risk as well, right? It's never about the return. It's about the risk you took to get the return. So sometimes a lot of people, like a lot of times actually, people DM me and they go, "Oh, what's the fastest way to make my first hundred thousand? Or can I make a hundred thousand dollars trading in the stock market?" And I'm go, "All right, how much do you have uh, to start with?" Right, of course you can make a hundred thousand dollars in the stock market, but if you have five hundred dollars to start with, you got to take a lot of risk to get there. Uh, your get your hundred thousand dollars before the summer. You know what I'm saying? If you have ten million dollars and you're trying to make a hundred thousand dollars in the stock market, you don't have to take as much risk. Just keep that in mind, y'all. It's about the risk, man. All right, I think you guys get the point. So I'm gonna go look for something I want to trade. GM. 
Let's see. Oh, GM's looking decent. If you use this auto support and resistant, you can move a lot faster too. You set your stop there, set your stop there. Either one of those would probably do the trick. All right. CVS is CVS is looking like an amazing trade actually. So I think I'll take the CVS and the AAP trade. All right, so watch this. If I use the auto support resistance, don't pay attention to the colors. Who cares about the colors, right? If it's above the current price, you know that's a target. If it's below the current price, you know it's a stop loss. So boom, I'll put my stop here. If it breaks this, I'm out, right? And then if I want to know specifically what that dollar amount is, because you can't see it right there, you can do this. You can go to inspect and you can just move 72.11 so we'll say $72 stop stop 72 bucks first price target $82.50 then we'll go second price target 85 you see the price fall uh, price was falling 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 stops falling bounces falling 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 stops falling gaps up remember I said that these gaps will close right about the other stocks you see this little gap up so you think oh cool like we had a big day that gap eventually fail I mean close right so boom here Next price target, which looks to be about $94. Why did I pick that? Look, look how it acted as a level of support. Falling, 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 stops falling, bounces up from there. This is a significant area, right? Same thing here. It's falling, 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 trade sideways. It stays sideways for a minute. This will probably act as a level of resistance for CVS eventually, right? And then up here, boom. All right, so <clears throat> this is how I set up, or this is how I'll calculate the whole play. So first, let's get, it. I like to run these percentage changes because I want to know that my trade's going to be worth it. So I could do the quick math in my head to determine what I'm going to get right. So I know, all right, if I, for every 10,000 I get, for every 10,000 I trade with, you know, I'll get a 38%, I'll get $3,800. So if I'm put $2,000, I mean, $20,000 into this trade, I'm looking to get a little bit less than eight grand. All right, so, <clears throat> looks good to me. And then this is how I would write it down in my This is how I write it down, like in my notebook or my like trade journal. So I'll come and type it out. So we got price seventy four oh nine. We got uh, stop seventy two. Risk two dollars and 
nine cents where did i get that from if i hop in at 74 dollars and nine cents and i sell at 72 dollars that means i just lost two dollars and nine cents for every share that i bought right so i'm risking two dollars and nine cents to get whatever my price target is right so let's say ultimately my price target is 100. let's say i'm not going to sell any shares until i get to 100 right i would just take the 100 I would take the 100, subtract it by $100, which is my price, ultimate price target, like hypothetically, here are my actual price targets. But for the sake of easy math and writing this out, let's say ultimately my price target is 100 bucks, right? Subtract the price that I buy in, 74.09. So I'm looking to get $25.91 per share, right? That's my reward and my risk is $2.09, right? That's how you would calculate your reward. Um, so right here, using that, Target. It would be twenty four oh nine. Right. Uh for mine it's not gonna say this because I'm gonna scale out as we go up. And then um you can also add how like your trade size. Right? So if my trade size is a thousand dollars, then Uh, I would also put how many shares a thousand dollars buys me, right? So we would go one thousand divided by seventy four. Oh no! So I know I'll have thirteen point forty nine shares. All right. So. Um, or, or you could write it out just flat out like number of shares. Boom. And then I'll take that, put the play in motion by tomorrow, and then let it play. All right, I'm most likely going to take this trade. Wait, let me go check the weekly chart. Yeah, I'm most likely going to take this trade. You see, even on a weekly chart that we're um, <clears throat> cold as well. So, let me show you something. All right, let's say on this day right here, which was what, March 2nd, you see that CVS, the RSI for CVS is cold, right? Or even this day right here, January 24th, the RSI for CVS is cold. So, you get in on the trade. Right, and then it runs up, falls, gaps up, then it keeps falling, keeps falling, keeps falling. Right? You could have known, you could have known that this price was going to come down more, or not know that, known that it was going to come down more, but you could have taken a safer bet waiting for this part to go cold. Right? Look what it takes in order for a weekly, oh, the weekly chart to have a cold rsi you're gonna need a lot more selling pressure than the daily charts right it's a it's a longer time frame so you're gonna need the price to go down too far too fast uh over a longer period of time which gives you a more not accurate but a more safer uh buying opportunity i believe Right, because January or January twenty fourth. January twenty fourth, you're over here. Right? And you're like, this like this doesn't look like it's done falling. It hasn't even hit this level of uh, of of support yet, right? You're up here buying when you know that it could come down here to this level of support. If it breaks this level of support, it's likely to come down to this level of support in which it broke that. So this level of support would have been next so um 
I like that. Same with AAP. I'm going to take these. The the time frame continuity is there. The weekly chart, the daily chart look ready to go. All right. So what I want you guys to do if you want to get better at this stuff is just literally come look at it every day. Come look at these. Run your scans every day and look at the chart. Set your price target. Set your stops. Right? You don't even have to actually take the trade. And then check up on them. If you're not going to take the trade, but just check up on them or buy them in a paper trading account. So I'm going to take AAP and CVS. I'll post them for the Wealth Squad. Yeah, I hope y'all learned something. I hope y'all appreciated this video. If y'all drop me a lot of comments, uh, give me some nice comments. Subscribe, and I'll make more of these, like maybe once a week if you're interested. Just uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to keep doing this. We'll just call this like late night charting.